when you take on a legacy as demanding and excellent as my grandmother's, you have to do something really great. My grandmother, Dinah Vreeland, was one of the really important innovators in the world of fashion. She had three careers. From 1936 to 62, she was the fashion editor at Harper's Bazaar. Then she went to Vogue magazine as editor-in-chief, and then she went to the Costume Institute at the Metropolitan Museum, and she created a whole new relationship between art and fashion. On top of this career of doing these amazing things, she was a huge personality. She had tremendous presence. She was very funny, very witty, very outspoken, and left the world with some amazing quotes and, and bon mots that have sort of permeated the world. We wanted to take that wild imagination, great clarity, courageous dreaming, and, and build a fragrance collection inspired by that spirit. Great luxury stories have a distinctive DNA that permeates everything they do. So the question really was, what was the DNA of a Dine of Reeland fragrance? It had to really be innovative and stand alone. The first step that I wanted to work on was, what is that story? What is that message? What do we stand for? And be very clear on that. So before even talking to a perfumer or a packaging artist or anybody, we had to be clear on what we were doing. One of the key criteria is there, you know, is there longevity in this concept and is there relevance and connectivity with customers and are you able to evolve that and bring that forward to keep that relevance? We created a 35 page olfactive brief on what the story was, what the positioning was, who the customer was, where they were, and every detail we possibly could put on paper to help the perfumers and the art directors understand where we were going with this whole story. And at the conclusion of it, we made six different storyboards to sort of say, you know, there could be six different fragrances and one could be a bit of this story, one could be a bit of that story, but not working on ingredients, just working on stories. The next step, which was really fascinating, was to start spending time with perfumers. I felt that what I could really contribute is to educate them on this DNA. I, I felt that they needed to understand from me what the story was, what we were doing, what my grandmother's legacy was, and we would slowly move the fragrance forward. Then it was really a question of how to round out the collection and bring more elements into it. There were two pillars that I felt were very essential from the beginning. And one was my grandmother's love of words, and the other one was my grandmother's passion for color. Each of our fragrances had to have a great quote of hers in it, and on top of that, we really played with color. But all of those elements were added in after we had the juice. It all starts really, the juice is sort of like the, 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 the real foundation of the entire story and storyboard going from there. I was told early on that there are a handful of countries that are very important in the world of niche fragrances. The seven markets that we were looking at the most aggressively were really the American market, England, France, Germany, Italy, Russia, and the Middle East. And today we'd have to add China. But then I think that one has to sort of like do a lot of research on the internet and see what brands you think are competitors and see where they sell. And then you start connecting with those stores and saying to them, could I come to you and show you what I'm doing?
What is difficult with a small brand is to figure out how you can get in front of the key stores you need to be and how you need to keep communicating with them. I think that small companies uh, should learn to really benefit from an exclusivity. I'm not convinced that being in more locations in one town or one country necessarily helps. So, you know, I think that if you, you know, if, if you go to England, for example, and Selfridges or Harrods says, we would launch you exclusively, uh, I would agree to it in a second. And then you can say to them, okay, I'm giving it to you exclusively, but you need to help me out with the PR, you need to help me out with some bit of marketing support, and so you can get something because of that. Then the next piece is, how are we gonna communicate this? You need to have a real clear story on why do we need this fragrance. When we started the company, I brought on three people to help me. Uh, one person was helping with marketing, one person was doing operations and finance, and one person was telling the story. And I found that the person who told the story was as important in that troika. One has to spend time on the road and Part of the wonderful thing about doing that is you get a chance to speak with the people who sell your product, not the store management, but the actual sellers, who very often give really interesting insights into uh, feedback from customers, things you might want to consider doing, and you then become clear on who am I creating this for? And I think that as you're developing a luxury brand, there needs to always be tremendous discipline to speak to your customer. Does this talking to my customer? Does my customer come in and say, you know, I don't really like this. This is too cheap, or this is too out of my price range, or this is too weak, or this is too this. You want to hear that kind of feedback because otherwise you're just living in a vacuum somewhere. One of the things that we have to really look at in this entire world of niche fragrances is there is a customer who has gotten more and more sophisticated, more and more knowledgeable, ready to define themselves through their fragrance. And that phenomenon is very important. That customer is the one we're talking to. And I don't think there's a question of age, and it's definitely not a question of the fact that they're all in one country. They're all over the world. This world of niche fragrances has gotten a lot more competitive in the last years. The expectations of a brand today are multifaceted and it's very hard to have the resources to play all the different roles that you have to play because you have to be bringing in innovation on a regular basis. It's very hard to do that as a standalone business and with my limited resources, I couldn't go beyond a certain point. I was able to sell the company at the end of last year to a small American beauty group, TPR Holdings, and uh, I'm very happy that we did that because they have been very respectful of the brand and the heritage and want to take it to the next level. I chose an exit of selling the company. For me, this was the right path to take. I'm not saying that it's right for somebody else.